when psychologists started looking at how does development work, one of the first things that that popped into existence was uh, stages, you know, ages and stages kind of thing. And and what we're realizing now is like that's arbitrary, doesn't mm -hmm. work that way. I mean, there is a there is there are sequences because you know, like literally you until the nerves in your brain or in your body myelinate, there's a speed limit on how those things can work. And so, yes, small children don't function the same as older children or even adults. There are physical things and there are some sequential aspects. But to say that normal is is everybody at some level, it's like, on, and, and then, then saying it about anything other than a single feature of their capabilities, it's like... <laughs> You know, it, it, it's it's not realistic. It's not the way that the way that stages are popularly conceived is uh, just incoherent from an from a biological and 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 behavioral development perspective. Is people uh, uh, Todd Rose in his book The End of Average talks about how you have to think about people as you know if you have a profile like okay here's six features and they're this rare and this rare and this you know they're jagged. They're not, nobody's average. So little, So the example is great. The Air Force was having a problem because planes kept crashing in the late 40s, early 50s as, as jet aircraft start, started to come in. And, and it was not mechanical problems and it wasn't the pilot error. Even though that was usually what was attributed to, that was not true. And eventually what they, they did was they, they decided, well, the, the specs for the aircraft were set in the 20s maybe pilots have changed so they go and remeasure a bunch of people and they give this data to a guy and he's like huh they have 10 different ways of measuring people to size up a uh, you know the cockpit of an aircraft and he says okay how many people are actually average how many people you know line up right on 10 measures the answer is zero right. nobody is average and even if you go down to just three you still only get like two or three percent of the population, and so the 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 guy who did this was like, oh, well, nobody's average. So if you're designing for the average, it's literally is what they did. They said, here's ten measures. Take the average, design the aircraft for that, and it's like that's why you're killing people. <laughs> um, so so he's saying, you know, when you have ten things, they're going to be all over the place by definite. Like like it's it's just that's the way human beings are. And and in the education sphere, we're talking about more than ten, <laughs> and they're not the physical ones mostly, you know. So they're going to be all over the place. So it doesn't make any sense from a developmental perspective, from an education, just a learning perspective. There's there's just no sense in which you can say something's going to be normal and expect everyone to be at that at some stage. It's just so it's incoherent, and that's where. In designing institutions actually becomes really important, and I think this is the thing that that the the surviving free schools from you know so Summerhill started you know decades over a hundred years ago to all the ones that have started in between is the ones that survived have had an evolutionary pressure to do it right <laughs> or to do something that's that's successful from just a community's perspective, and that's why I think so many hundreds of schools actually failed is because they didn't figure it out. But things like Sudbury, Summerhill, uh, probably the Agile Learning Centers, the you, you can look at Actons, and th there's all kinds of interesting models. But I think the key is that they found a way for the community to be in conversation with who's actually present now today. This is the Agentic Schools Vodcast, where you will learn about schools from around the world where children's agency to make decisions about their learning and living is more important than their academic skills. What makes education possible is the satisfaction of psychological needs. So that is what these schools have in common with all others. What makes a school agentic is satisfying those needs particularly well. I'm your host, Don Berg.